Uh, or in the meantime, let's take a look at the corner wall and broad. Our selling is built up again when we briefly turn positive on a, on a turnaround in oil prices. Uh, right now, we're down about 124 points after what was one of the worst years on record going back to 2008. But there are a lot of folks sort of, you know, chomping on this data here and trying to seize on uh, signs of a China slowdown and how that could work to our improvement. It's a kind of a twisted sort of analysis here. We're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, then there is the concern going forward about uh, a trade tip that could last a while. But then you got to wonder, let's say we do score a trade deal, but China is in too bad shape to really turn things around. Let's get the read from Mayflower Advisors managing partner Larry Glazer and Kingsview Asset Management CIO Scott Martin. Scott, end with you. Your sense of what is driving the market this this first full trading day of the year. It still feels like that uh, terrible psychology, Neil. I mean, look, you know, we saw it overnight. The market's response to this data, this news today, Neil, is to sell first and ask questions later. Yes, I do see the rally that we're seeing off the lows overnight, which is great, but the volatility is still here. So, I mean, this is still a new year, same old markets, in my opinion, and the fact that the market is still looking at some of these uh, prospects as being somewhat negative. And to your point, I think you made a good one there. Yes, we could have a trade deal now get resolved in the next, say, 30 to 60 to 90 days, hopefully, but if the damage is done to China already, what kind of workout does this have in the market? So, to me, the market still needs to work itself through this psychological malaise that it's been in the last, say, 60 days. When we get through that, which is just going to be time, my friends, then we can rebuild to higher levels. You know, I, I've always argued, Larry, you and I have gotten into the, this as well with Scott and others, this notion that uh, everything hinges on trade, improvement on the trade front. And then the irony being that we get a deal on trade, but China's uh, too weak or not in the best shape to, 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 to make good on it. Um, how real is that fear, especially going into a year where a lot of people look at this manufacturing data out of China and say it's a sign of much more to come? Look, there's no doubt, Neil, investors would love to turn the page of the calendar in 2018 and also turn the page on a lot of the uncertainty that was causing the market volatility in 2018, move into 2019. But we see the China data overnight, and it was a bit of a Debbie Downer, right? It wasn't exactly what we wanted to see coming into the new year. It wasn't that optimism we were hoping for. But, Neil, I got to tell you, I think there is hope here because, look, we have a meeting in Washington over the shutdown. We've got talks going on with China. So some of these issues are being addressed. And I think for investors, the New Year's resolution for them right now should be focus on what you can control and not focus on Washington. What we can control is when you see this massive volatility that we saw last year, the peaks in sentiment at the beginning of the year to the troughs at the end of the year, that creates some opportunities at the end of the year with tax loss selling, certain sectors getting hit really, really hard. And I think that's for investors to comb through the rubble and see those disappointments, see them in financial, see them in industrial, see them in energy, see them in tech. And there are some great companies there that were just thrown out because of tax loss selling last year, which was particularly pronounced. You know, are, are any of you guys worried about inflation, not in the traditional aggregates that don't show it, but the, the, the smaller anecdotal pieces of evidence that consistently do? Drug makers today raising their prices anywhere from 8 to 14 percent. That's going to affect dozens of different drugs, some widely used, others less so. But I, I'm wondering if that's just sort of the drip, drip, drip of inflationary pressures the Fed pays attention to. What do you think, Scott? Well, it's interesting because if you look at the dot plot, Neil, that they talk about so frequently, which is their broad measure of inflation, look at CPI, look at the GDP deflator for some alphabet soup there. Um, the data really isn't that hot. And yes, you're right about the drug prices, but look at oil prices, look at gasoline prices now, multi-year lows. But it's interesting how the Fed, though, Neil, has remained on this hawkish, let's say, stance now about inflation, about worrying about inflation, when to me, uh, broad-based, we're seeing anything but. We're seeing disinflation, and God forbid, maybe yeah. deflation down the road if continues to be so hawkish as far as the Fed's stance is concerned. So the inflation picture, I think, is really good, more of which we get data on Friday with the employment report. What do you but think I also of think, Scott, when, Go ahead, Larry. No, I, I think Scott makes a great point here because if you think about the data, it's global data today. So the U.S. is maybe 25 percent of global GDP. So the slowdown that we've seen in other countries, in particular in China, as evidenced by that data overnight, but also in Europe and other places, is what's affecting us. It's why our Fed could be kindler and gentler in, in 2019, and they could be a little bit more dovish in 2019. So even though we may have some inflationary uh, pictures here, global is... is 
it, oil becomes global. It's a global commodity. It helps our inflation picture. And I think a little bit of inflation is a good thing. It's like champagne on New Year's Eve. Too much of it, you feel it after the fact. And that's kind of where we are in the beginning of the year. You know, I can't stand champagne. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Come on. I, Prosecco. How about Prosecco? Maybe. But I don't know, you know. Guys, thank you. Happy New Year. Appreciate it.